Of all of the museum's collections, in some ways, the land is our first and most important connection, not just because of the stories that we tell on the land with archaeology and other things, but because of the way people interact with the land. The fact that you can go out and walk the trails and really connect with nature. We become an oasis for you. You're able to really kind of disconnect from the urban lifestyle, if you will, and kind of reconnect with yourself, reconnect with history. The museum founder looked out over the view from Fruitlands and thought about the people who had lived in the valley in the past, from the Native American past, the early colonists, the transcendentalists, the Shakers. All these people were very important in the way that the American identity was constructed in the 19th century, and she tried to preserve their legacy here in our collection buildings. To me, what Claire Endicott Sears created in the site was a, um, was a window on New England's landscape, and the landscape being not just buildings and acreage, but it was on um, the people that actually inhabited the land. She had a very personal relationship both with the people and the objects that she collected. It's a remarkable legacy that she's left us and what she put together here been very, very positive experience and a very important experience to bring this contemporary art. In order to really experience the entire location, we really needed to have things out within the field so that it's a sense of discovery. They can get surprised by what they see, they can get drawn, and most of our artists actually do work not only is it contemporary, but it's usually in some kind of organic material. It tends to blend in. It certainly expands people's view of what they're seeing when they come to Fruitlands. So the artist in residence we started about eight or ten years ago, and there's been a variety of people. There have been folks who have done watercolors. We had a poet. So we were basically trying to look at folks who would come and give people in the community a chance to interact with these people. It was a palpable feeling of space. The community was wonderfully accessible and, and eager to be engaged in a lot of the projects that I was working on. I conducted this um, sort of collaborative project called Hive and it engaged the community and I was sort of inspired very much by the Shaker um, philosophy about how there is void between people until they engage with each other and then the void goes away. And we all worked on individual little units. These units that were created by hundreds of individuals were then collected by me and, and um, assembled into a big organic form that we call Hive. As an interpreter at Fruitlands, uh, we interact with many people and I enjoy meeting different people from all different walks of life who come through. I am particularly fond of the Native American building. I have an uh, affinity towards Native American artifacts and the history of the Native people of this land. It's a rich history and it's a very sad history too. One really amazing thing about visiting the Fruitlands property is the reaction folks get as they drive into the property and look out across the view shed. It's where the land really puts on its most spectacular show. People see the view and they sort of stop dead in their tracks. As both a legacy of the people who had lived here in the past, but also as a way to educate the next generations about the environment, sustainability, the way that human culture interacts with ecology over time. As we look ahead and try to think about the next 100 years of the Fruitland story, some of the things that we're really thinking about doing is continuing to make improvements in the experience, um, adding perhaps or enhancing to some of our facilities, um, improving visitor amenities, and developing relationships for programs that help connect our audience to the great things that we do here. We want to make sure that we're getting people excited about all areas of our collection and really connecting to them. Our exhibits and our programs have really grown uh, way beyond what our facility can really accommodate. And so what we really need in the future is to create more space for functions, for education programming uh, and exhibits. When you come up uh, the hill and you sit at the top of the hill at Prospect Hill and look out, 
I think at least I experience that same sort of notion of uh, this is really sort of a you know a sacred spot it's a holy spot and it really needs to be preserved I think it's one of the most beautiful places in eastern Massachusetts and uh, we have a, a duty and a responsibility to the generations going forward to preserve this site as a open space that uh, generations of the future can enjoy and take advantage of. None of the things that we've done today and none of the future visions that we have would be possible without the support of all those who have rallied and helped us. We really appreciate our donors, uh, those members who have volunteered to help, members of our board. It really takes a village to get a museum to a century mark. And we know that, even though we were founded um, by the single vision of one woman, we have been maintained and sustained through the efforts of so many. We're so excited about the plans that we've made. We're looking forward to an exciting future and we can't wait to get started.